Oops, let's pick another one. Now, what else do I have in my head here? Uh, let's look at what I've got in the data. Um, what else do I have in the data? What else? Uh, oh yes, okay. Uh, we have um, we have um, status, marital status. Marital status. We can see that. Say we've got three groups. We can have married, single, divorced. All right. You have married, single, or divorced. Not undecided. Married, single, divorced. So I've got three groups. So status, three groups. What does the rule say? It says I should set up two dummies. Right. Well, which one should we leave out? Single, married, divorced. Well, it depends on what you're trying to compare things to. So if you want to compare like married people and um, divorced people's earnings compared to single people, you'd leave out single people. If you'd like to compare married and divorced, hang on, married and single to divorced, you'd leave out divorce group. All right? Like that. So say I want to compare groups to the single group. We go divorced, married, There you go. And let's interpret it. What we'd say here is, since these two are two dummies, the divorced one is coded 1 if you're divorced, 0 otherwise. Married is coded 1 if it's married, 0 otherwise. In other words, this is saying for, ma for divorced people. For divorced people, they earn m more than single people by 0.1 dollar, about 10 cents, say. Married people earn more than single people by three dollars per hour. What if you want to compare married to divorced? Well, you can just set up the dummies again, leaving out one or the other, or you could just look at the difference between these two. Obviously, married people earn more than single people by that much. Divorced people earn more than single people by that much. So the difference between these two is how much married earns more than divorced. If we did 3 minus 0.1, it's how much married earns more than divorced. Always use your common sense. If you've got the wrong sign, then um, after looking at these figures, it means you've got your subtraction the wrong way around. Yeah? This minus this gives you how much this over this. If you did this minus this, this minus this, it tells you how much this earns more or less compared to this. All right? Great. OK, well, hang on. Thing I haven't talked about. If you read a book like Gujarati or something, you'll hear about the dummy variable trap. What is that? Is that some kind of uh, fly trap or something, or is it just trap for dummies? Okay. Divorce, married, single. So what happens if I violate that rule? I have groups which are three. Status having three groups. And I put all three groups in, single, married, divorced. Let's see what happens. Oops. Near singular matrix error. Regressors, meaning the X's, may be perfectly collinear. That's another word for saying multicollinearity. Well, I can say it's not near singular matrix error. It is exactly single matrix error. What that means is that your least squares estimator breaks down doesn't mean that EVUs has uh, crashed or anything. It means that you've basically done something that can't work because you violated the rule. Yeah, the perfect multi, what you have is perfect multicollinearity. What that means is that there is a perfect linear relationship between these things. Let me show you. It means that if I know one, two of them, I can tell you what the third one is. So basically it's redundant. So the fact that you put it in has caused this problem. Now, let's show you what, how it looks like in terms of um, the data. Okay, male, divorced, married. Where has it gone? Oh, it's right here, in alphabetical order. Right click. This is something good by, this is uh, something else you can learn by the way. Look how I'm opening up data as a group. Okay. So for each observation represents a person, isn't it? So person one, male, because it's one, zero for divorce, so he's not divorced, and he's also married. Oh, hang on, that is wrong. I got the wrong person. Um, I don't want male, do I? I want, where is it gone? Married, divorced, and single. Makes up the group of status. Huh. OK, 
Okay, let's try again. Let's do this again. First person. Divorced? Not divorced, because it coded zero. Married? Yes, married. Single? No, not single. Second person. Divorced? No. Married? No. Single? Yes. Does it make sense that you can have more than one for each row? No, because you can't say you're married and single at the same time, can you? And you can't say you're single or divorced, or divorced and married. Okay, so in other words, for status, you can only have for each row one single one. All right. Now, what do I mean by perfect multiple narratives? Because if I know two of these groups, say I know the person is not divorced and is married. Well, if I tell you that he's not divorced and is married, I can tell you that he's single. Not single, sorry. Say for the second, but that's obvious because I've just told you. If, if I've told you that he's married, then that's it. But how about this? If I tell you that it says that he's not divorced and he's not married, well, you can deduce that he must be single. Yeah, You don't need me to tell you that in another column. In other words, one of them is redundant because knowing two of them gives me the third. And that's what it means by dummy variable trap. Perfect multicollinearity because knowing k minus 1 is enough to know k. So if you put in all k, you end up in difficulties. I I, um, I avoid the uh, matrix algebra here, um, def um, description of the thing. But if you're interested, uh, there is... Um, here I'm talking about x dash x inverse matrix. If you're interested in that, look it up. I ain't interested in that for this video. Okay, so that is... Um, I've shown you how to read a dummy. I've told you how not to interpret a dummy. And I've told you how not to fall into a dummy variable trap.